Welcome to Anatomy and Physiology at Glen Oaks Community College. I'm Dr. Ren Hartung. For this video, I'm going to be looking at peripheral nervous system things that at least my students need to know. Um, on the brain model, which of course you need to know for central nervous system, you also need to know two specific cranial nerves. Um, this is the right olfactory nerve, and this is the left olfactory nerve, cranial nerve number one. This is the right optic nerve and the left optic nerve, cranial nerve number two. Um, and those are the only cranial nerves that I have you know on the brain model. This model is of the, supposed to be of the entire nervous system of course, and I'll walk through the things that you need to know starting from the top. Up here we have the cervical plexus. This is a collection of nerves coming off the spinal cord in the cervical region, the cervical plexus. Um, so this would be left cervical plexus and right cervical plexus. Next down in terms of plexuses, um, this is the brachial plexus, a collection of nerves going down into the arm, brachial plexus. So this would be the left brachial plexus, this would be the right brachial plexus. Um, on this model, of course, also I could ask things about the brain, cerebrum of the brain, the brain as an organ, cerebellum of the brain, um, and of course spinal cord coming down the middle here. Let's go down below to the other two plexuses that you need to know. This is the lumbar plexus. This would be the left lumbar plexus and the right lumbar plexus. This would be the sacral plexus. We're down into the sacrum now, nerves coming out at the sacrum level. So sacral plexus. So this would be the left sacral plexus and the right sacral plexus over here. Sp specific nerves. Um, coming down the arm, and I usually ask on this right arm because the other arm um, has been turned, it's been pronated. This one is out, so let's do the nerves here. Here's the thumb side, so this is the radial nerve. And here's the little pinky side, so this is the ulnar nerve. And in the middle is the median nerve. If you remember, that's the one that we have trouble with if we have carpal tunnel. Over here on the legs, um, this is the left femoral nerve. And this is supposed to be back further. This is sciatic nerve. Uh, the thing about this type of model is it's trying to show you three dimensions, but it's really a two-dimensional model. So it's not showing this terribly accurately. But they are showing this behind that um, coxal bone. So this is the sciatic nerve. And again, femoral nerve. This would be left femoral nerve left um, sciatic nerve. Over here is the right sciatic nerve. If we come down further following the sciatic nerve, we go behind the knee. So you could call that the popliteal nerve. And I think those are all of the major nerves I ask for on here. Oh, for autonomic nervous system. This is the right sympathetic trunk right sympathetic trunk. Let's go over to this model, the torso model. Um, what nerve would this be? If you were thinking right femoral nerve, you're correct. That's the right femoral nerve. They don't have a femoral nerve on the left in this model. They're trying to show more of the blood vessel type stuff. I'm going to turn this model around. Over here under the right butt cheek, that is the right sciatic nerve. And I like this model for this because I can talk about um, gluteal injections. When we give an injection into somebody's gluteus muscle, we have to be very careful to avoid this nerve. So what we do is we make a cross over the butt cheek, and then we know this upper outer quadrant is a safe place to put that injection. And we will miss, because we'll be up in this neighborhood, we will miss the sciatic nerve. Um, other things possible on this model, spinal nerves coming out on this part. Those are spinal nerves. And let's go to the arm over here. I use the muscle arm model. If I asked what a nerve is here, because of the collection is hard to tell what's what, you could just say brachial nerve. If I ask what the plexus is here, it would be brachial plexus. And again, down here towards the hand, we have on this side, again, because it's the thumb side, which nerve is this? You can see it in yellow there. It's 
the radial nerve. So this would be, in this case, the left radial nerve. And then over here on the other side, pinky side, it would be the ulnar nerve. And let's see if this one has a um, median nerve. I think it does. But we'd have to take off this muscle. There's the median nerve. Let's look at the leg. This is a big leg model. And it happens to be a left leg. Up here, just because we're looking at the back of it, I'll do this one first. Um, we have to pull off the gluteus muscle. And there is our sciatic nerve underneath the gluteus maximus. And then if I flip this leg over so that we're looking at the front, we see another nerve. And that is the femoral nerve. Um, as long as I've got this model here, again, for peripheral nervous system, these would be spinal nerves coming out. And dorsal root ganglion. We see one, two, three dorsal root ganglia here. Um, and those are also possible for peripheral nervous system. The other model, I don't have it out, so let me just run for it. For peripheral, this type, this type of spinal cord model. And again, same as what I just showed you over there. Here are spinal nerves coming out from the spinal cord through the vertebrae. And we've got dorsal root ganglia. If you see that bulge there, that's a dorsal root ganglion. And the other thing that we have in this model nicely is the left sympathetic trunk and the right sympathetic trunk. These, this collection of ganglia on either side of the spinal cord, sympathetic trunks. And that's about it. I think as long as I've got this model here, let me show you also um, one of the things that's common to be missed. Um, this is a space. The name is tripping me up right now, so see if you can come up with it before I do. This is the epidural space. And you can see there's, there's veins and such in here, but it's outside of the, uh, of, the, um, of the dura mater, so it's the epidural space. That's where you'd get um, drugs inserted to deaden feeling below along this part of the spinal cord. They don't, when they do an epidural, they don't put it directly into the spinal cord because they might damage the spinal cord. They put the drugs here into this epidural space, and the drugs then diffuse to the spinal cord and have their effects. All right, I think that's enough for this little video on peripheral nervous system. If there are any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below. And thank you once again for watching.